whether you think you can or you think you cannot either way you are right whenever i read these lines by henry ford i am reminded of the immense potential that humans have to get what they want merely by having the right belief system however we sometimes constrain ourselves into defining what we can or cannot do only because of the beliefs that limit our potential and growth a success rate is directly proportional to what we believe is true for us what's achievable for us what's possible for us because our thoughts and beliefs influence our actions and our actions lead to outcomes but what if something is coming in the way of taking the action fall in love with selling as you acquire the right mindset selling style and sales process that can help you take your business solution to more prospects clients and the world at large if you are a women entrepreneur who is looking to bring in more sales scale and sustainability in your business you have come to the right place i'm roshni baronia your host for the show is the sales which is all about helping you bring your true and complete self to each and every sales conversation have you ever experienced that no matter how important it was for you to call up a prospect you did not no matter how useful it could have been to show up at a networking event but you didn't no matter how relevant your question was but you didn't raise the hand to ask i'm sure these or similar to these situations might have occurred in your life maybe you were trying to avoid rejection confrontation or judgments by avoiding that situation actually this inaction is just a protective mechanism that is used by your brain in order to save you from unpleasant experiences because probably somewhere in the past or previous instances you have had or have seen someone else have a similar experience which did not look good this avoidance is called a limiting belief limiting beliefs stop us from taking action based on our past experiences or even the fear of unknown it is when our beliefs which are predominantly a result of the interaction and influence of our childhood work life education media and the people we converse with on a regular basis it is when they start coming in our way of growth they start limiting our advancement they start stopping us from taking action that is when they become our limiting beliefs they look something like i'm not good enough i'm not going to succeed so why bother it takes extreme hard work to be successful no client will ever pay me that much i just got lucky and luck never lasts we all have our own set of belief systems which either move us forward in life or pull us back the best way to get rid of limiting beliefs is to transform them into an affirmation reframe the words to tell yourself something which helps you in taking action change the script because you know what's the best part they are not facts they are not universal truths so by all means you can flip them over once you recognize them a huge impact of limiting beliefs is visible in businesses when entrepreneurs are not able to sell high ticket services or get more clients or make themselves visible and accessible online because of limiting beliefs especially in selling limiting beliefs is a big reason because of which many women entrepreneurs are not taking massive actions 
towards selling more in their business. Yes, there are limiting beliefs in selling too. And if you are someone who feels the same way, you could be sabotaging your business growth by shying away and postponing the key sales activities like calling your prospects, working on your sales system or doing follow-ups. So let me share with you today five of the biggest limiting beliefs in selling and then also share what new belief system you need to have to be more driven to take sales actions. Here goes the first one. A high price would scare away my client. Give me a nod if you have ever undersold your services or asked for a lower price for your product thinking that no one is going to buy that even though when you know it is most optimally priced. If at some point of time someone rejected your high price offer, it is not because your offer is not worth it. It's probably because the prospect does not have that purchasing power or they are not the right fit for it or they are not ready to make such a commitment to themselves. So the new belief you need to instill in your system is there are clients who are willing to pay me for the value I provide and they will come to me. By choosing your clients, you are doing a big favor to yourself because you will enjoy your work more and will constantly deliver value. So get into the belief system that people are ready to pay you for your value creation at the price you ask. The second limiting belief. I'm not an extrovert, so I cannot do selling. Another way of saying this is, since I'm not an extrovert, I cannot do a lot of talking. Hence, I will never be good at selling. Do you know what people are most interested in? Themselves. All that people care about is themselves. And if you are giving them your complete attention, a listening ear, they will know you will take care of their problems. In sales, it is no more important how much talking you are doing. It's more important that how many quality questions you are asking. So change the script to say to yourself something like this. I'm empathetic. I ask good questions. I'm a good listener. This makes me great at selling. By asking powerful questions, you can take the lead in any sales conversation. So start believing that you are great at doing that. Another common limiting belief is, follow-ups might irritate the customer. Now this is a big one. I have often seen this with my consulting clients who are mostly startups and SMEs who have small teams. And when we make the email sequences for their sales process, they cannot believe that they have to make at least eight follow-ups before closing efforts on a prospect. I see a huge resistance coming in people to send even the third email when they have not got a reward on the previous ones. But let me share this research with you, which says that 48% of the entrepreneurs never follow up with the prospect and 80% of the sales happens in the eighth contact. That is the power of follow-ups. So it is imperative that you as a solopreneur have a follow-up strategy, maybe a shorter one, but do have a follow-up strategy for your prospects and referrals. And what's going to make it easier for you is when you start looking at follow-ups as a way to engage meaningfully with the prospect. Take it as an opportunity to share insight and value. Make it not about yourself, but about the person's need. 
value his or her time for reading the email or taking the call thank the person for it send love and make insightful content an integral part of the message the transformed belief will be like creating value is my second nature i do it with every follow up contact limiting belief in selling is also it takes so much effort to chase new prospects i am good with my current clients well let me tell you how that belief would be serving you you might be having a few loyal clients who repeatedly give you business which is good but your growth graph will look like a plateau and not a rising curve one of the key objectives of any business is to have consistent and sustainable growth if you are a sole person responsible for bringing in the business it is your foremost priority to grow sales your fear of rejection or not being good enough with words is limiting your income as well as impact sales is a high effort but high reward activity so schedule time for it replace your limiting belief and staying in the status quo by saying i clearly know who my sole clients are i take out time to make consistent efforts and reach out to them and the last limiting belief i want to talk to you about today is it will seem very desperate if i ask for referrals this is the most contradictory thing i see people doing they say our business relies on word of mouth and referral marketing but then they are afraid of asking referrals ideally if you have served well to your client they will automatically refer you but if not by just asking them do you know someone who might find this service useful you are not being pushy because here's the thing if they love your work so much they will be more than happy to help you by getting more, you more business in fact they themselves have been waiting to do that but of course they are busy people so maybe they couldn't focus on passing on that good word now that you ask you have made it easier for them so now you have to start believing that I have served my client well. It's only right to benefit more people with my work. Each individual has the ability to be limitless. And let me tell you as a fellow women entrepreneur that you have got all that it takes to be limitless. what we say to ourselves has a powerful impact on how we see ourselves achieving our goals and reaching our full potential so choose to pick a positive self talk in life and in sales go ahead challenge yourself each day and commit to taking actions that move you forward in your business and if there is any particular limiting belief that you are experiencing while selling share it with me at the link given in the show notes and i might be able to help you in overcoming it thank you so much for investing your time into listening to this episode if there is any aha moment or insight from the episode please share it as a review on spotify or else share it as a comment on the blog post that is up on my website the link to which is mentioned in the show notes The best way to show your love to me is to take the screenshot of this episode, post it on your Instagram, and tag me at Roshni underscore Baronia. And lastly, I know you might have already done it, but if not, please subscribe to this show so that you do not miss out on any future episodes. See you again.